officially begin. Mm -hmm. So uh, welcome to all of you here uh, to lead this forum for us. Um, take it away. Okay, uh, thank you. So I'm just gonna share my screen. Uh, okay, here we are. Okay, so uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you for your time. Um, my name is Andrew Ryman. Oops, what happened here? Okay, and we're going to be presenting on uh, how we've been able to bridge social distances in online learning. And uh, the seven of us are going to be talking about things that we do to support uh, build relationships, networks, connections, and, and other strategies that are also part of lifelong language learning. So this is the lineup this morning. Um, uh, yeah, I'm Andrew Ryman. I'll be talking about bridging distances. We have uh, Joseph. Okay, sorry, let me back up. I'm a coordinator of the uh, English language program at Aoyama University, as is uh, my co-presenter, Joseph Diaz, who is going to be talking about students uh, and teachers' needs and kind of analysis of that, followed by Kazuko Namba, who will talk about successful teaching. Um, and I'll let each person introduce themselves in more detail if they want. Um, followed by Natsuki Suzuki, who is a, a, a master student at Aoyama University and is going to be talking about her work at elementary schools. Then the last three presentations are going to focus on kind of practical applications. We have uh, Catherine Takasugi talking about strategies and innovations. Jonathan Campbell will talk about how to use journals and scaffolding students. And Fraser will talk about several, or the amazing Fraser, I should say, will talk about several ways to use the chat function to build connections. Okay, so anyway, um, happy Sunday, everybody. And uh, thank you for giving up your morning to spend with us. So for my part, I'm gonna be focusing on bridging distances both as a teacher and administrator of the program or coordinator. And I want to focus on accommodating differences, uh, meeting challenges and creating opportunities. I forgot to mention all of us are affiliated with Aoyama Gakuin University. I'm going to start by with an outline. I'm going to talk about the context where I'm working, the issues, how um, they're assessed, and then outcomes, and maybe some strategies that we can use. Okay, so the context that we find ourselves in uh, is online synchronous. That's been the, the style of teaching I've been using. Um, they're university English classes, and I want to also talk about I'm sorry, I may have accidentally muted our uh, speaker. Let me just fix that. I'm so sorry. Co-hosts, please unmute yourselves. Everyone else, Un please remain muted. Unmuted. Okay, we can hear you. Yeah, okay. Okay, we've got our co-hosts back. All right, I'm sorry about that. Um, we should be able to continue. <clears throat> okay, Fraser, <laughs> we can see you and hear you. Yes, yes. I'm I think not Andrew is there. Andrew, Andrew is the, uh, the speaker. Andrew it, Raymond. On my end, it looks like we should be able to hear him. I have not muted him, but Andrew, can, can you hear me? We cannot hear you, Andrew. Can we hear all of the other co-hosts? Co-hosts, can you sound off? Can we check that we're working? Uh, can yeah. you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, Kazuko Sensei, yes. Yep, I can hear everyone too. This is Catherine. Yep, Catherine, you're good. Okay. 
Mm, I, I can hear you. I can hear the one. Okay. That is very strange. From my end, it looks like we should be able to hear him. There may be something on his end. Andrew, are you using uh, headphones? Perhaps they have become unplugged. Can Joseph hear this? Maybe, maybe Joseph can talk to Andrew through another medium, a phone call or something. I think I might be able to hear Andrew very, very distantly. Yeah, the screen has stopped on uh, uh, too. It seems to be frozen on his end. But it's, yeah, it's not a Zoom issue because I can see your video just fine. Okay. I'm a little jealous of those <laughs> seagulls or whatever in the background. <laughs> Looks like a very beautiful place to be spending this morning. Uh, Andrew's disappeared. Yeah, it looks like we lost him. He might join back in. I don't know. Shall we wait a few moments for him to try to reconnect? Perhaps. Yeah. Perhaps Is... moving on to the next year. Can we switch the order if he comes back in? <clears throat> can we fit him in at the end, perhaps? Uh, yeah, maybe. Maybe in the interest that, of time, that might be the thing to that's do. A, that's a better idea. Have we lost Joseph too? <laughs> <laughs> we lost Joseph. We lo our, our I two see bosses. him <laughs> as chaos. Oh, there's Joseph. There we are. Okay. I'm sorry. I got uh, booted off uh, Zoom uh, and I've been trying to get back on. <laughs> so here I am. Good. So glad, we, glad you made it. Andrew. I Andrew. <laughs> Oh. Sorry, guys. Did I, did I get cut off? Yeah. Yes, we, we Andrew, lost you. you oh, there? I'm sorry about that. I, uh, I, I had sorry. no way of knowing. Okay. Um, how, how, about how long was I talking oh. before? <laughs> you. It was like uh, the I was second no. slide, and yeah. then the screen kind of froze, and we lost you. Oh no. Um, well, I'm sorry. Uh, let me. Only I'm not even a host anymore. Ah, um, let me let me fix that for you. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I apologize. I don't know what happened. It just suddenly everything shut down. Okay. There you go. You should have your co-host. Okay. Here. I'll I'll try again. I don't know what happened. So um, about where? What was the last thing you heard me say? <clears throat> Word student. The word student. <laughs> I think I say that a few times. Um, okay, well, let me. Maybe the second slide. <laughs> the second slide? No, it's your fourth slide. Fourth slide. <laughs> so around here? Yeah. So after I talked about my context? Yeah, that's okay. a slide. Okay. Oh, that's too bad. Well, anyway, in any class, we have students with special needs. Um, about three to seven percent of any population. Did did I talk about this yet? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> so uh, generally, we have these issues in the classroom. Um, these students with social psychological differences, gender differences, and so on, learning differences. It's about three percent, three to seven percent of a population, which is the same distribution as being left-handed. So if you want to get an idea of that, you visibly, you can see how many people are left-handed and that'll give you an idea of other differences. However, in an online community, these differences are, and difficulties can be magnified, right? We are, we're all familiar with these two images, the, the class that's Genki and ready to go, and then the class that's very reticent and doesn't want to participate actively. So in these cases, support and interaction become critical, but more challenging. Right, because on top of the social psychological differences, we have students who are reticent and, and resistant to the technology or they have fatigue and depression, lethargy, loneliness, they lack direction and motivation and their relationships are strained as well. So what can we do to support these students, right? So we have, we have the students in the top row 
who who have uh, um, you know social psychological difficulties, and then the bottom factors as well, you know, lack of privacy, connectivity, and so on. Right. Similarly, supporting teachers, right? We teachers have also had to relearn the classroom and relearn teaching. And some teachers overcompensate or they can't find direction. Some teachers lack motivation and, you know, we're all human. So we get depression and fatigue. Some teachers are resistant to the technology. Uh, we're also living with different people. We have, um, we lack privacy, our connectivity doesn't work and so on. So anyway, how, how do we assess the situation and help each other? So these questions are important. What do, do our students need? How can we support difficulties and special needs? How can we enable access for everyone? And what can we do from a distance? And the same questions go for teachers because this is 50-50. Yeah, what do teachers need to be successful? And uh, Joseph and Kazuko are both going to deal with these subjects in more specific detail. But basically in the case of students, we need to provide scaffolding, guidance, motivation, purpose, and communication opportunities. Um, for teachers, they need program orientation, they need tech support, troubleshooting advice, and socialization as well. So I think by sharing our stories and building empathy, collaboration, you know, working together on these issues, um, communicating and connecting with each other is, is a good way to solve the issues and make a, a good learning environment for everyone. So generally the outcomes from what we've been working on for this past year is you know, raising awareness of learners needs, understanding teachers needs, sharing coping strategies and creating a network of support. So regardless of the issues, whether it's depression or fatigue or overwork or connectivity or privacy, we need to find and eliminate these barriers, develop tools and strategies for access and participation and make the students and everyone feel that they're doing a good job, and confident and being able to overcome their differences and, and build self-esteem as well. <clears throat> so what I think we need to do is create <clears throat> opportunities beyond just teaching or learning for supporting, socializing and even releasing stress. You know, all of these activities, whether it's sharing or laughing or listening confiding, complaining, or chatting and chilling, they all go a long way to helping um, us uh, be as effective as possible, either as students or as teachers in this situation. So um, a few things uh, before I, I finish, just um, that we've done to support teachers and students. For example, we have an online uh, orientation that we've done twice. And at the beginning, back in February and March, when this, this situation was becoming a reality, we were like, where to begin here, right? Because um, everything that we've done normally was just not going to work. The classroom was just not an option. And we were like, how do we even start? You know, it's just your life is just, there was no light at this tunnel. I mean, you, all of us remember that. And what we had to do is we had, we had to provide a way to provide pedagogy. Uh, just how are the classes gonna even work? The regular things that work only in the classroom, how are we gonna do this, you know, using Zoom? That was a mystery. Nobody had heard about Zoom a year ago. We had to find a way to provide materials, uh, textbooks and other learning materials um, and try to find platforms like Google Drive or Vimeo that would allow us to put them online. There's also copyright issues. Can we, can we photocopy textbooks or scan them? Um, we had to think about different LMSs to use. You know, we can't have um, every student using a different LMS for every class and <laughs> teachers too. Many of them are using, you know, five different LMSs. And we had to, um, if our university had a unique one, we have to train teachers in that. We also have to talk about protocols. How are we going to even do grading and, and other things um, on the procedures for, for submitting assignments and testing and, and so on. Um, and then finally, different kinds of assurances that your technology will work, or we had students or sorry, teachers that were abroad, are they going to be able to, you know, if they can't come back to Japan, are they going to be able to teach their classes? So these are all things that we addressed in an online orientation to kind of support teachers. Another thing that I've been doing weekly is a virtual teacher's room uh, every Friday. And this is a way to also scaffold uh, teachers just just to kind of get together and talk and and see what's working and what isn't what what problems we're having 
whether they're technological, uh, you know, just kind of friendship and bonding, um, sharing ideas and strategies. And basically it's a safety net in case anything goes wrong, anybody could just drop in and we can talk about it and maybe work through it. Um, also um, doing the same thing for students. I think it's very important um, that we can't meet students face to face, that we establish a range of comfortable channels of communication, not just the ones that the university specifies or that you're comfortable, but ones that maybe you may never have used before, but are, are good for the students. For example, using line or, or other methods to connect with them. And then generally empowering and motivating the students, giving them confidence and self-esteem, however you can. Um, from this distance and try to focus also on listening that that the students feel that they can confide and and connect with you right um, so I have some examples you know how can we create opportunities for meaningful connection communication and mutual support um, I'll just quickly talk about this and if we have time later um, I can share more details but one of the things I do to get the students really to participate and feel comfortable and confident and in online learning is I make I ask them to do weekly mini presentations about the subject of the week and in a way to engage entertain and educate and basically it's a one to two minute presentation using one google slide template that I create and trying to use a story format that they just present to the class and that we use for discussion and these are some examples here so when we're talking about um, cultural issues or cultural differences, which are, you know, it's very difficult to do online and out of context, if the students share a story like this, um, then we can, you know, see firsthand uh, with a real story, uh, some cultural differences, and then we can use these for discussions. And when we're talking about, you know, cultural issues, like for example, Hofstede's uh, cultural orientations, like individualism, collectivism, and so on. This is a, a good way for students to visualize and, and kind of connect. I have a few of these. Anyway, um, I don't want to talk too much, but these are just some activities I've, I've done to do that. So I think um, I will stop there um, and pass it over to Joseph. Okay. All right, um, yeah, thank you. And uh, if anybody has a quick question, I'm happy to answer it. Otherwise, uh, we, can, we can save them for the end. Thank you. Okay, okay. good morning, everyone. I hope you could hear me. Uh, if the same thing happens uh, to me that happened to Andrew, uh, could someone please contact me through line, uh, pre preferably Andrew. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to start uh, doing some, um, the host, oh, okay. okay. Uh, I get a message saying host disabled participant screen sharing. Hmm. Yeah, it, it seems, seems Joseph, uh, when he came back, he wasn't uh, uh, given hosting duties or hosting privileges so, again, so. Oh, I see. Joseph needs to be made host again. Okay, is um, okay. So uh, can somebody do that? Um, it looks like it's happened already. I just got a sign saying Joseph is now co-host. Oh yeah, okay. yeah, you are Joseph. You should be good to go. Okay, sure, very good. Uh, excellent. Just a moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me pick off, uh, pick up from where Andrew left off. So uh, fortunately, uh, we had a fairly heads up from the administration about uh, the possibility of online teaching, and that was in February. So we were able to uh, uh, contact our adjunct teachers, Andrew and I, and to find out 
um, how prepared they felt that they would be for uh, a, a, a venture like that. And um, we could all get stressed out together. So as program coordinators, we were stressed out um, and trying to com uh, comfort and prepare highly stressed out uh, teachers. And uh, uh, we felt a little bit like uh, this, 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 uh, this caterpillar. Um, so, and we were likely to confront students who uh, totally knew. Um, so we were particularly worried about the freshmen because they didn't even know what face-to-face -face university education uh, in life would be like, uh, let alone virtual versions of them. So Andrew and I wanted to be bridges or to build bridges. Um, um, and the bridges that we wanted to build or to be were bridges between the administration's expectations and the reality of what the teachers and the students were going to be able to, as I'm going to show you shortly, um, asked us uh, what we wanted to do uh, and what kind of tools we wanted to have. Um, and then gave us something completely different. So, uh, um, so we felt that we had to be the bridge between these tools, which weren't the favored tools uh, by us or the, the teacher. Uh, and we also felt uh, we needed to be the bridge between the more tech savvy of them together um, and also bridge uh, the face-to-face -face oriented oriented course content that we had been teaching uh, to the more online um, verge, uh, friendly uh, version of it. So in February, uh, we were asked by the administration uh, if we should um, have to start uh, the uh, the uh, semester online. And at that point in late February, uh, it seemed like rather... Um, so in asking teachers about that, uh, they mainly said that they wanted to use Google Classroom, MS Teams, um, Microsoft Teams, and Zoom. Um, so we explored those possibilities and with the other full-timers in various departments at Algaku, we practiced uh, using these. Uh, the university then came back and told us, thank you very much for your valuable feedback, uh, but um, we decided we will not use Zoom, uh, we will not use course, uh, we will not use uh, um, uh, Microsoft Teams, which uh, we were already, we already had, um, which is, if you're not familiar with it, it's a, Ellen has a kind of 1990s sort of uh, interface, um, and WebEx, which is something that looks vaguely like Zoom, uh, but un unfortunately is not as hassle-free as it's uh, promoted. And uh, especially at the time when we were um, trying it out in February, mid-March, uh, we found that uh, the breakout room, rooms really didn't work very well. So um, to the university's credit, at least, they did not um, um, Zoom would be possible to use as long as we didn't bother the information resource center uh, with support with it or uh, ask for funding. So we didn't push for uh, any support or funding because we were afraid if we did so, they might just uh, take, take away the, their permission, their blanket permission that we use other products. Um, so strengths that we, we had in our favor going into this world of online teaching uh, was that in our department, we've uh, um, teachers have always, from the very beginning of the, uh, they've always participated very happily in our orientations and also 
uh, our orientations were very much like many uh, JALT conferences, uh, having this into it, uh, just as the teachers in our program um, are participating in this forum today. And it's always been very collegial. Um, and we've, um, um, uh, from about three or four years ago, we pioneered a system called who would be teaching the same students a writing course and a listening course um, with the idea that they would share their respective knowledge and experience about the course. But also very importantly, if students had problems or the teachers had problems uh, with the content, uh, they could be on the same page with each other. And uh, uh, it would be special needs students or who are really struggling um, could, um, could value from the coordination among the teachers. Uh, also a strength in our program was really good balance of senior teachers, and I don't mean senior citizen teachers, although some of us are, um, um, and the newer and mostly younger teachers. Uh, the senior teachers having the advantage of really knowing the curriculum well, and the newer teachers uh, and bringing in some, some new innovative ideas. Okay, and so we connected the teachers to each other by uh, email. Uh, so all of the IE active listening teachers, for example, were all networked together in email groups. And also I set up MS Teams. We fortunately, we also had access to as an option to use with students, uh, but uh, teachers, uh, both adjuncts and uh, full-time faculty were able to make use of it. Okay, after one semester of online teaching, we decided to give uh, uh, surveys to both teachers and students. The semester, because it began uh, in May, May 1st, um, it, it went into the middle of survey from the end of the semester to the end of August. So we had 39 uh, teachers from the program who responded to the survey. So, um, and uh, we asked teachers uh, what they were expected to do at their other universities, and we found that 82% Awagaku is in the Kanto region, and most universities there were doing online instruction. So, 82% were doing entirely online teaching and I, we wanted to know what their mo worst fears were at the outset of things the the fears of our teachers uh, the first and one of the biggest fears was a transferability of their skills to an online environment uh, technical problems or um, mastering the technology uh, possible undesirable sequelae uh, of on, of the online environment, like distractions, for example, insufficient background in online teaching and students' response issues, like, namely a lack of response, and fears of specific teachers' unique circumstances. So the first of all, transferability of skills. So how to manage and communicate effectively, how to be clear, um, in communicating in this new medium, and some of backgrounds who use uh, games more integral um, integral part of their classes worried uh, whether these would translate or transfer over to the online environment. Of course, uh, they worried about tech problems. Wi-Fi would Zoom work, and uh, these un possible undesirable um, consequences distractions, fear of the unknown. Um, and most of our teachers, although they may have dabbled in online tools and teaching, they never, including myself and, um, and um, um, the, the <clears throat> LMS that was our university LMS, uh, probably even touched that LMS. 
So the worst fears of online teaching before the semester began on students' response issues. So students not speaking in Zoom, students would not be engaged. And some were very specific fears. Uh, how do I keep my spouse quiet in the next room? Um, much to our relief, um, the vast majority of these fears, 2% of the teachers said uh, that they reality. Uh, students did experience tech pro technical problems, but nowhere near the extent that we, we expected. Uh, um, also, one of our biggest worries was, would the students have PCs or would they be trying to connect after the um, initial first few weeks of the semester, students really realized that they needed to connect using PCs. So they went out and, and bought them. Um, so uh, that turned out to be a non-emittent and uh, not so serious problems. As far as the modalities most heavily used, as Andrew mentioned at the beginning, uh, it, was, it was Zoom. So as you can see, green here is for real time. So um, we all uh, opted for Zoom rather than WebEx and trained our teachers during, the, uh, during three uh, kind of marathon sessions early on in, the, uh, in, in March early and early April, how to use Zoom. So in only a few of the classes, as you could see, uh, writing and listening uh, did um, teach primary modality through assignments. Uh, that were posted on course power elsewhere. So uh, we asked teachers to evaluate uh, the systems that they used. And you could see here course power, WebEx, Zoom, Google Classroom. And green, um, uh, indispensable and useful are this green and blue at the very top, indispensable and useful. As you could see, compared to Zoom, uh, course power, the um, the systems that the university provided with us trained us uh, for for the uh, information media center provided workshops for uh, those were not seen as indispensable by the majority of the the uh, teachers and larger percent uh, found uh, things like Google Classroom or I'm not going to show it uh, here, but we also asked about just uh, the Google Suite and Google Drive, and uh, teachers found those much more in dispute. Uh, and as far as uh, students' impression of the online tools, uh, it matched what uh, the teachers found to be indispensable. So Zoom, Google Classroom, uh, and also YouTube and LINE. Most of our teachers connected the students through LINE, which became a very important um, alternate avenue of communication and it helped the students uh, make friends uh, and um, um, helped with the social dynamics of the class. Um, we asked how students, how uh, students felt their online classes went. Oh, this is teachers, sorry. And uh, as you can see, uh, good and excellent are this kind of teal color and orange. And um, so 75 to 80 percent of the teachers in RI very well. So we're very pleased to see that um, because, and most likely we would have a similar percentage um, who feel that way uh, when we teach face to face. So we felt that the online, delivering the classes online didn't really hamper teachers um, feeling that they could be effective. And when we asked students to raise their online learning on a scale of one to 10, um, uh, seven 
uh, out of, uh, it didn't differ very much from how they rated their attitude towards learning in general before the beginning of the semester. Uh, almost the same rating. It was just a little bit, little bit higher. So we asked if teachers thought that their classes ended up uh, good or even excellent, uh, what did they attribute those favorable outcomes? Um, so being well prepared was really at the top of the list uh, and lowered expectations as well. Uh, maybe tempered expectations would be better. Uh, good organization. And other teacher factors are the repetitive nature of the classes. So setting a rhythm. And this was found to be more important when, when using Zoom and having online lessons than normally. Uh, use of course notes, uh, having a creative approach. And there were student factors they thought that made their, their course excellent or good as well. Students tended to be, have a very good attitude and uh, uh, were happy to do, to, to do things online, partly because the bulk of their classes uh, outside of our program at the university were- uh, Joseph, military. sorry to interrupt you quickly. I yeah. just got a message that uh, we have to be careful of time. Yes, yeah. yes. Sorry, okay. we have five, five more presenters. Right, right, sorry. yeah. Okay, I'm going to just skip to the end. Good online environment. Fortunately, the, the, teacher, the um, um, students expressed a lot of appreciation for our teachers uh, and um, they felt that they were getting plenty of support and they, they did give suggestions, categories of student suggestions were in these areas and I won't go into all of them. Uh, students were able to, interact with their classmates, but not nearly as much as, much as they wanted to. So when we asked what problems they felt they experienced, um, eye strain, stress, anxiety, uh, exhaustion, et cetera, were seen as the, the biggest uh, factors. And um, most of them went to uh, classmates to um, deal with those problems. Uh, teachers had similar uh, issues and uh, they tended to go to families or colleagues. So um, based on that, we, we, found, we decided to tell the uh, students what kind of resources would, were available. And we found out um, um, from the survey what the students knew about these resources mm -hmm. and what they didn't. And we filled in the blanks. Uh, so the survey was really important in that respect. So I will stop sharing and go to thank you. now. Yeah. Sorry to go over. Th thank you, Joseph. That was very interesting. Yeah. Okay. So next, um, let's move on to uh, Namba Sensei. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. uh, good morning, guys. Uh, my name is Kazuko, and I'm going to talk about the way to successful online teaching. And I'm looking for oh, this slideshow. Okay. Yeah, so slideshow. I, I can't. Okay. <clears throat> My topic is um, the way to successful online teaching. And when I found that I was teaching online, I aimed two things. First, I'd make it as similar to in-person teaching as possible. And second, it may sound contradictory, but I would add something new to my teaching, which wasn't possible offline. The following um, is what I've done. First, uh, prepare teachers for their first online teaching. Second, help students, especially freshmen, succeed online. Third, promote friendly atmosphere. And I never used Zoom or the university's LMS. So a support from the faculty and veteran teacher was indispensable. And after I learned the basics, I practiced how to use them with other teachers and even with my family. And I was one of the stressed out the teachers, you know, um, it was really a nightmare. Anyway, so May was trial and error and confusion the apology period. Uh, poor Wi-Fi, wrong timestamps and dogs are barking and cats smelled and grandma and younger siblings are coming. And I enjoyed that part. But anyway, um, 
um, my next door neighbor demolished their house. So always um, awful noise was coming. And next I set up a workshop with three teachers. Teacher A, um, this is me. I've more than 25 years of experience of teaching the course, but my technological skills were really, really limited. So I explained the concept of the course and the flow of the traditional teaching. Teacher B uh, was new to the course, but he is technologically very skilled and told us what we could do or couldn't do online. Teacher C was also new to the course, so he wasn't bound by old ways like me and suggested um, very interesting ideas such as dividing the class into two, which I did. My class had about 40 students and it was difficult to deal with them all in Zoom at one time. It was the second year for teacher D and her technological skills were limited. She asked many questions. Challenges became clear through her questions and sharing ideas with others. Later, our teacher B summarized the teaching plans and clarified their pros and cons. We then shared them with others. You can see comments in different colors, black, red, blue, even purple. By the way, red one um, is by Joseph, so how serious he was, okay. <laughs> anyway, um, our background varied and we had different ideas. It was great to work with them as a team and I'm really grateful to all of them. Um, help students, especially freshmen, succeed online. Most freshmen didn't have friends in May and they depended uh, entirely on the teacher. It was hard. I'll give you two examples to illustrate this. First, the number of inquiries from freshmen's class to the teacher was over 20. While that from a sophomore's class was only two, the gap may suggest that sophomores could ask their friends to figure out problems while our freshmen couldn't. Another example, in week one, I tell students to register on the English Central website. The company and administration do most of the work and all they have to do is simple and easy. In the real classroom, it usually takes less than 20 minutes for the most students. There are always five or six students who don't understand the procedure. So I ask, um, I always ask the students who could register successfully to help them. Maybe 30 minutes is more than enough. This year, it took two months for the whole class to complete the registration. According to the tracing function of the LMS, one student looked at the instruction 10 times and still didn't register. He became stressed out and isn't able to join the class, even now, very sad, yeah. Help students, especially freshmen, succeed uh, online and provide multiple ways to connect, uh, contact the teacher. Having easy ways for the students to contact the teacher is important. There are four ways uh, in my case. The three of them are similar to those in the classroom. Number one, Zoom main room. There were 20 to 40 students and outgoing students asked questions freely in front of others. Number two, Zoom breakout rooms, four or five students each. So even if they were a little shy, they could speak up if the group was small. Number three, I asked the student to stay after the session if they wanted to talk to me privately. Shy students or students with issues often did so as they do in a real classroom. You know, during the class hour, no one asks questions, but after the class, they would bombard you with many, many questions. So that's the same thing. One student with integration disorder sometimes stayed and talked about her worries and mental or physical condition. She had repeated the course four or five times before, but she felt less anxious this time and could attend the sessions regularly and pass the course. Yes, she made it. I was very, very happy. And online was better and easier for students like her. Mm -hmm. And some outgoing students also stayed and enjoyed chat. I asked them to support others. 
And again, sophomores could do this, but it didn't work as well with freshmen. The LMS or Gmail. Some students prefer the communication via the LMS or Gmail for the quick response or for privacy. One student wrote to me that he was hospitalized twice because of depression. We corresponded back and forth several times and later he could speak to me after Zoom. And now he attends the class regularly. Unfortunately, he is the only person who could overcome depression. There are a couple of students who have never contacted me and I've tried to reach them in vain. Promote friendly atmosphere. I sometimes gave them, gave them five to 10 minutes to chat in the breakout room without supervision. They exchanged lines and other contact numbers. Many students told me that thanks to the opportunity, they could make friends and some had lunch or went shopping or to Disneyland together. And they got a part-time job uh, even from the friends. And they even stayed in friends places and participate in the Zoom session together. So virtual interactions developed into real ones. However, uh, this is only possible when they live in the same area. Many students still live in their hometowns, Hokkaido, Okinawa, Fukushima, and Akita, and so on. So it was difficult to hang out. Still, talking with each other weekly helps them a lot. These two girls on the top left participate in the session together. And I also set snack day and costume day. They brought some snacks and drinks and they put on something. I had sunglasses, ears, and anything was okay. You know, I look really stupid, but they were very happy and they really enjoyed. You can see their smiles. Another one. Okay. The last slide shows the sharing reports project I tried at um, another university. At the first assignment was self introduction. After they submit the report, students write comments for each other. The rule is if someone writes a comment on your thread, you have to write back. Unless you write, you cannot get comments. It's a good way to get to know others and also practice their writing. So you can see uh, this girl, uh, this um, student's got only three uh, comments, but this one has um, got 15 already. And this slide shows the comments they write to each other. Conclusion. Have I achieved my goal? To a certain extent, yes, I could teach online as I did in person with modifications. I tried something new, which was possible only online, such as costume day or sharing reports and others. However, the most important thing helped students, especially freshmen, succeed online was the biggest challenge. Three freshmen out of 39 in one class are dropping out. They really need technical and psychological support in order to be successful. Thank you. Okay, I just went okay. very quickly. Okay. Great, okay. thank you so much, Kazuko. That was very interesting. Okay. All right. So then let's, uh, next, let's move on to uh, Natsuki Suzuki. All right. Okay, so I'm going to share my slide now. Okay. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Okay, so my name is Natsuki Suzuki, and I'm a master's student, and also I'm a teacher in elementary school. I teach third graders. And in elementary school, children and teachers can get together in the classroom with wearing a mask and with some other regulations. So firstly, I'll, I'd like to give you an update on our current circumstances. In April and May, the school faced temporal, temporary closure. Children only had schools once in a few weeks. And what teachers could only do was giving some original homework. For third graders, I tried to find some copyright free materials on the internet and put them together. We wish the homework would be something that gave each child excitement of learning English this year. 
and in June, each class had been divided into half and took turns coming to school every other day. At this time, facial was encouraged to wear, especially in English classes, so that we could see each other's facial expressions that really colored the classroom, helping the class perked up. Okay, so. I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay, and next. In July, all classmates started to get together in the classroom. At this time, it had lots of cases that some children cannot use the face shields properly and broke it easily. Also, some parents worried about wearing face shields, not masks, is not enough for preventing in infection. So, about a half number of children started to wear a mask instead. And in October, facial was completely judged to be insufficient and new rules have established that wearing a mask all the time for both children and teachers. And that has been really challenges. So usually teaching English is an enjoyable activities for children, but a lot of the activities that give them joy has been cut, such as singing songs, interacting with friends, using English and so on. Basically, all children have to sit like this, facing a blackboard, just looking at the front. So how can we still warm children's heart and make English fun in a condition that we cannot connect the way we used to be able to? So as for some strategies, I have tried harder than usual to make a moment that can bring children smiles. And we always started the class cheerfully by singing a song, but we can't do that right now. But we could listen to this kind of song and at least they could say how to say hello in different languages. Do you know how to say hello in different languages? Let's find out. In USA, it's hello, hello. In China, it's ni hao, ni hao. In France, it's bonjour, bonjour. It's great to say hello. In Japan. Could you hear that? Yes. So this, um, I played a song 0.75 time, times speed and it's a bit fast for children. And next one, another example is we started a class with their favorite activity doing a quiz like this. I've tried to find a quiz that could capture their interest on YouTube and put that on PowerPoint slide as a starter for having a great class on that day. And also tried to pay attention to the wall where these posters were displayed in the classroom. I found that some children are in charge of doing magic, gestures, fortune telling and riddles. So I have tried to include some activities related to these. For example, for a magic yellow handkerchief turning into a white egg, um, here children can enjoy it. And also incidental learning is there for learning ex expressions. What's this? Yes, it's a handkerchief. What color is it? It's yellow like this. And next one. So as a way for learning effectively and happily, we have learned English through the story Goldilocks and the Three Bears. So one day I I wore a clothes which I color coordinated to be being looked like a bear. Also made a stamp of, of a bear and use it for checking the worksheet. As a way for learning a vocabulary, we put food samples or real food in a box and let children touch them to see if they can get it right. <laughs> like this and children really became addicted this, to this activity even during a recess we have enjoyed it together still now and opportunities for them to use the language for actually getting to know each other is limited so at least the listening materials should be something that have element of really getting to know somebody in the real world so original materials were made it looks like this hello mr taula 
What food do you like? I like pizza. Okay. So we use this kind of materials. And lastly, Hello, oh, sorry. And lastly, um, we made a video that let children review what they've learned in the classroom. And also they can see us teachers not wearing a mask with full of facial expressions. Walked into the world after that. One sunny day, I met three bears, very angry bears, run <laughs> away. One sunny day, I met three bears, I ran away and never went back. So this was our new challenge and <laughs> And it's children's voice. Okay, so that's the end of my part. So air hugs for me and thank you very much. Wow, thank you very much, Natsuki, for that uh, wonderful heartwarming presentation. Um, hopefully if we have time later, at the end, uh, you and Fraser could get together and do some magic for us. <laughs> okay, so great. Um, all right, let's um, move on ahead to uh, next. Catherine Takasugi is next. All right. Thanks. All right, you're all set to go. Okay, uh, and the guy she must. Click and start. All right, my name is Catherine Takasugi, and I'm just going to be adding to the conversation today about techniques, strategies, and findings. So I know we don't have a lot of time, so I'm just going to zoom through a bit. All right, so initial issues when we first started, lack of digital skill. I'm talking about me, not the students, although they had it as well. So I was behind, shall we say. But it was actually an advantage in the end because I could really understand what the students needed in order to be successful as well, because I had just learned it the week before. Internet stability, this was a huge issue, even at my own house. And actually in terms of connecting students with their classmates or even into the classroom. There was one student actually, and she still has issues now, and she's the slowest one to get into breakout rooms. She's the slowest one um, to shift between anything online. And, it, and she's nervous when she's giving a presentation because she's never sure when her internet is going to just stop on her. And I would say internet stability was a huge predictor of whether you could be very successful online or not, regardless of your English level. Um, emotional connection. I was worried about this. How am I going to show who I am to my students? How am I going to get my essence across? How am I going to develop trust? Um, it was okay in the end, but I just really had to be careful and show my vulnerabilities. Don't be afraid. Say, hey, I learned this last week, instead of pretending to know that I are pre pretending to know something that I didn't know. I was just really straight and honest with them. And that was really probably my best strategy. Um, my expectations, I was one of those uh, teachers who probably gave too much to my students in the first semester. And I have changed my strategy this semester and we're doing a lot less, but I think it's better quality in the end. Basic Zoom techniques. And some of these I'm sure you know, but I'm going to go through them. Um, Pre-class, I put on music, I use Spotify. Now, lots of teachers use this, but what I do find is that students come to class early and then they're ready to go when the, when the time comes for the class to begin, they're there. I also might use the whiteboard to remind them of what they need to have ready for when the class starts. I like to use every minute that I have with my students effectively. So that gets them there on time and ready to go. Welcome questions, they're actually just attendance questions, but they know this in advance. I put them on Google Classroom and they're expected to have quite a sophisticated response when I do talk to them. But it means that I am connecting with every single student, every single class in even just a minimal way. Breakout rooms, I use them a ton. I assign a leader every time and I try to um, make it a different leader as much as I can, but this minimizes the 
the time in the breakout rooms where nobody's sure who's supposed to lead or do what, okay? Um, group assignments. So first years versus more established classes. I tried group assignments with my first years and I wasn't that impressed with how they worked out. There were a couple of issues because they didn't have a chance to connect with each other enough to be able to share the group work enough. But with my second or third years, group assignments were fabulous. So we just have to keep that in mind, I think. Textbook work. I also did these in breakout rooms so that my students could talk to each other. So they basically did them independently, but they had other students to ask questions to if they needed or if they wanted before coming back to the main room and uh, revealing their answer. Three ideas to steal. So what I've done is I've tried to find innovative ways for my students to connect with me or with each other in meaningful ways. I think that's really what we've had to figure out for online learning is what kind of meaningful interactions can we do and then exploit them to the best of our ability. So three ideas to steal if you want. I've got this No Excuses November, which I'm going to go into detail a little bit for you. Um, podcasts, I won't go into detail, but the slides will show you so you can come back if you want to see the recordings. There's links there if you want. And a poster presentation. I wasn't sure how it was going to go, but it went pretty well. Oh, and lovely. That's my cat for you all. So no excuses, November. I try to inspire my students. Oh, golly. Apologies. Cat. Anyways, no excuses, November. I inspire with videos to begin. Um, so the girl doing 100 push-ups or uh, push-ups for 100 days or Matt Cult cuts, uh, try something new for 30 days. And I do this along with my students. So we brainstorm ideas, physical, mental, academic, spiritual, family, health, concrete, doable, uh, quantifiable ideas. So my No Excuses November is no meat or fish for the month, Kumon for 15 minutes, drink lemon water every day, and no devices after 10 p.m. So I inspire them or I try to encourage them with my, I do it right along with them and ask them how they're going. Anyways, it's pretty interesting. My students came up with ideas such as, I'm going to learn five Spanish words a day. That was one. Another student said, I'm going to walk my dog every morning at 9 a.m. And this satisfied her getting outside. Um, it helped her family because I call a dog a family member and gets her rhythm, her daily rhythm back on track because uh, a lot of my students I find are up all night and anyways, their, their schedules are skewed. So she, she chose this and I said, well, how, because for me, this wouldn't be difficult. Um, but I said, well, what's your star level on this? I asked, what's the difficulty? She says, it's 10 stars for me. I thought, well, good for you. Good for you. So emphasizing that every one of us is in a different place. And if all you can guarantee, all you can promise to yourself is flossing your teeth every day for a month, good for you. You know what? Go for it. Whatever works for you. So this is a very flexible, but real activity for students to do. So um, I, I make them write this intention document and here's a link for it, but it's a statement mm -hmm. of goal, a star evaluation, foreseen difficulties, preparation, motivation, and then a pledge. So mine's, mine's available if you want to check it out. Accountability, I teach accountability. So in my welcome questions one week, they have to state, what are you going to do? And, and they do, they say, I'm going to, and once it's out there into the universe, they really feel they have to do it. And that's kind of cool too. Um, we have a calendar with stickers on it. Actually, mine's right behind me, how successful I am being on all four of my elements. And, and then they have to do three one minute videos and put them on Seesaw and Google Classroom. So I use Seesaw because it does allow other students to see what you're doing. And so I really like that element. If it's just on Google Classroom, I only get to see them, but I think it's really important for students to present themselves to their classmates. Um, bonus marks if they join our Facebook group. It's a private group, but I never felt I could force anybody to join social media of any sort. But I leave it as an open welcome invitation. And then we can share our information there and they can see how well or not well I'm doing on my challenges. Um, the emphasis is on honesty. 
connection with other students, effort, flexibility, and uh, discussion of, of learnings. So the first day that we came back, it happened to be, I'm a Tuesday teacher. So November 3rd, there was no class. And then November 10th was the first day back. And I, I started with, how's it going? How is your no excuses November going? And I said, I have a, a confession to make. November 1st, I forgot I ate an American dog. And they just, they just relaxed. They were so glad that their teacher was silly enough. And I said, well, I'm going to add December 1st onto mine because I can't believe I was so foolish. I'm making you all do this. And, and then I messed up. So, and then they were so beautifully honest in their responses and and we laughed and we had a wonderful time. So this is a real life connecting element for the students. So anyways, that's my biggest strategy is honesty and have fun and laugh about it. So this is my vision board and my calendar for my students to see every week. And yeah, anyways, there we go, moving on. Podcasts, I'm not gonna talk about it, but it's available for you because this is recorded. Um, if you have questions, you can always email me. Um, so this is part of, with the podcasts, I make them each write um, a document, a paragraph, which is going to go into their final document. They have three different podcasts to listen to. And then we use Padlet. And I really want to um, introduce Padlet to you because it's a beautiful visual synchronous actual way for students to connect. And they write which podcast they chose and why they chose it. And sometimes it's very simple what they wrote, but they were so amazing in what they chose. So for example, one young woman uh, was like, I want to listen to this because I'm interested in gender, gender identity issues and I don't know anything about it and I'm going to be a teacher in the future. So this is something I feel I need to know. So opening podcasts, like there's everything under the sun in a podcast assignment. Um, so it really opens up students to look at what they're interested in and then share it in three different discussion classes over the semester. The challenge with this, just so that you know in advance, is podcasts are difficult, really difficult. And I had some of my best students come back in a panic saying, I can't do this, I don't understand a thing. And I said, what can you understand? Okay, just pull out any point you can and work mm. on that one, and that's okay. That's real English. These are real people speaking. Go for it. Just don't aim for perfect every single time. Aim for understanding what you can. And if you really can't do it, you're still obliged to make the discussion work for another student. So come up with questions if you, if you really can't do it. So anyways, that's how I approach the podcast um, assignment and I would do it again. I think it's a really interesting, fun assignment. Poster presentations. My students interviewed me first to sort of practice and I use Padlet again so that they could write out their questions. And this has turned into a real um, great interaction between me and the students. They all asked me questions. Some were personal um, or interesting or inter international marriage related, really interesting questions. Really, some were simple, some weren't. But we've kept the, the conversation going for mm. the whole semester so far. So that has been a beautiful way for me to connect with students who want to connect with me. So. They don't have to, they really don't have to, but it will reflect in their participation to a degree. And I do remind them and encourage them, but if they don't do it, they don't do it. So this led up to um, interviews that they did in the classroom. So I have a poster example on the side here, um, actually behind me as well. And I asked them three questions and then they had to put up the results. And then they had to, one of their questions or one of their, one of the, the important part of this assignment was discussing the findings. So they took one class to interview their classmates about something that they wanted to know about. And that was a really good way for them to interact with classmates rather than me. And then they have to write it up in a beautiful format and discuss the findings in the next class. So that was another, I would say, relatively successful um, assignment for my students. So there were, those are my three assignments. And if you ever want to know more about them, just feel free to contact me. I have my email at the bottom of each slide here. All right, so overall learnings. Lazy in person is lazy online. So you're not gonna reach everyone every time. There are going to be sharp, shortcut um, ways around to do a lot mm -hmm. of, but you don't worry too much about that. Uh, work, with, work with everyone where they are. That's what I'm finding. Be clear on expectations on your grading 
what you expect for participation and absence. And then it, I really found it was hard to read the room. So I ask my students for visual responses quite often. I need their thumbs up. I need a very visual, yes, I understand you, Catherine, or no, I'm not understanding a thing. So I just ask for very visual responses so that I can say, for example, is my video working? And then they're like, yes. And I just say, thank you, got it, move on. But I, I sometimes just feel that this online system, I'm speaking into a void and I don't want to, I really want to mm -hmm. connect with my students. So those are some of my learnings. And then what to keep, what am I going to keep regardless, um, whether I'm face-to-face -face or online in the future? Um, paperless. I love this paperless system. I cannot lose anybody's assignments, basically. And I think that's brilliant. Um, yeah. I know when it's handed in, it's got a time stamped on it. It's, it's really good. So Google Classroom, I'm a Google Classroom user. I'm not against using a different platform, but I like that I have a replicable, uh, tweakable program set in place that I could use in the future. I think it's really going to cut down on um, my preparation in the future. I think it's really great. Mm. And then some of the um, apps that I'm using, Seesaw, Flipgrid, Flipgrid, Shadow Puppet, Padlet, YouTube, I use whatever is available to me. Um, but Padlet is one that I haven't seen a lot of people using, but I, I actually quite like it. It's visual, it's a little expensive, and I'm just using the free version at the moment, but I'm definitely considering buying it because um, the response to it, the way the students use it is fabulous. So anyways, that's everything I've got for you today. Yeah, thank you, Catherine. Those are really uh, great practical um, activities and, and strategies. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, let's, uh, so just to make sure we have enough time, let's move on to the next speaker, which is uh, Jonathan Campbell. Um, yeah, I think Catherine, you're still sharing. Okay. I think you, if you start sharing, it'll cut hers off. Yeah. Is that, okay, there you go, Jonathan. Excellent. Okay. Um, okay, I'll keep this a bit short. Um, I've only got four slides, but they're all pure gold. So this should go really quickly. Um, my idea is a bit more specific, and I wanted to talk about um, supporting teachers and students with limited technology, limited technological skills, um, encouraging communication, and dealing with some students who have anxiety. <clears throat> and so I thought I would talk about something that I think most teachers have done at some point, which is just a weekly writing assignment, a journal. Um, <clears throat> um, yeah, so anyway, it's something we've all done. So we're familiar with it. So basically just journals. And so here's what we're doing in the classes. Um, it's a weekly activity, 250 to 350 words, and it's put on a form. And that's the important part. Um, they have replies that they have to make before the end of class or um, footnote, there's a deadline. <clears throat> the topics, they're either free sometimes, usually the beginning of the semester, it's free, they can write about whatever they want, or there's an assigned topic related to an upcoming discussion or presentation we're doing. And then the other point, the last point is we begin at the beginning of the semester, the second week, and it goes nonstop. Even if I don't tell them, they know it has to be done. Okay, so those are journals. This is, you know, I'm preaching in the choir, everyone knows. So now basically the, Here's what I found. Um, and the journals that they've sort of evolved over time, and I just found a lot of advantages to them. So the beginning, obviously, the reading and the writing. Um, I should have added reflection, um, thinking this, but this is what we know journals are good for. Now, the preparation for the discussion, <clears throat> when we have a theme or a topic, that will be the previous week's journal topic. They write about this, and I've actually found that when we do get into the Zoom discussions, the students are obviously more prepared. They know some of the vocabulary and the ideas. So even if they're not responsible for what's happening in that Zoom discussion, they're participating more frequently. They're more willing to actually speak out because they have an understanding and they're not coming into it cold. So I found that that's actually helping. Mm. Um, 
Now, on a social level, they do know each other better. So they're at the beginning of the semester, because it's a free topic, they just write about what they've done or what their hobbies, their hometown, anything is fine. And several times I've gone into the Zoom rooms, the breakout groups, and I'll hear them saying things like, oh yeah, I read your journal and yeah, that, I wanted to ask you about this or that was really interesting, can you tell me more? So a few times it's happened, um, especially with the first years because they've some schools are having events, but basically they don't know each other. Mm -hmm. And I found this has really helped them just to get some background on each other. Um, it maybe hasn't changed their lives, but it's given them something else to look at. Now, it also helps me make a connection with them because I can read their journals. And then I found very simple action of reading a few journals, going into the groups and saying something specifically <clears throat> to a student saying, oh, I read your journal. I want to ask you more about this. Or I really like this point you made. And you can see on their faces, it really affects them when they know that their journals are being read and that you're interacting with them personally. It does help mm -hmm. them and they're really participating more. Um, now, in addition, it is a place for them to vent, share, complain, be heard. And even if I give them a topic, uh, what I'm finding is that they're, use, they're adding extra or they're using some of their word count and just putting in a paragraph to talk about their own personal things, regardless of what the topic is. And I'm really happy they're doing that. I'm not gonna stop them. I'm glad that this is happening. <clears throat> so they'll say, okay, before I discuss this week's topic, I just wanna tell you about what happened this past week or <clears throat> something that's going on in my life. And then they'll go on with the assigned topic. And I think that's great because it's just giving them a chance. Um, mm -hmm. And in addition, if I give them a topic, just let's talk about you know how we're doing this week or um, let's recommend each other ways of dealing with uh, stress and anxiety. <clears throat> it really, they really deliver. They add, they add a lot of material about how they're dealing with things. And it just gives them a chance to, to be heard, really, to talk about the things that they want to talk about. Um, now, more in the technology vein, these last few points, um, it's asynchronous. And so it gives them time to think about what they want to say. And one of the main points is that anxiety is less of a problem. So I've got students who I've never seen on Zoom. Um, and every week they're putting up their journal and they're putting up their replies without fail. They're contributing. I can see what they're writing there is not half-hearted. They're really contributing, but they're just not joining Zoom. Um, <clears throat> some it's technology, some maybe they're just having some issues and I'm not going to push them, but I know they're there. Mm. And this makes me feel better about these students. I can help them because I know that they're participating. They haven't cut out. They haven't dropped out. They are there. So there's a connection we have. Um, now with the forum, the technology itself, it's low bandwidth. It's simple. It's easy to use. You can type text into a box. You can use a forum. It doesn't require a learning curve. Um, just you need to type your ideas. Most LMSs have it. So you don't need to go out and find new technology. And I'm not putting down any other applications or websites. Those are great. But this is something you don't need to learn. Most people know the activity. Most people know the technology. You can step right into it. Um, and I think I'll finish up. Just the last point is attendance. Some schools require attendance to be taken. I think the Monka Show is really pushing people to do it. And yeah. one of my schools doesn't allow attendance to be done on Zoom because you can't rely on every student having technology to show up. So mm -hmm. that's why I have the deadlines for the reply. The journal's up before class, the reply is done by a deadline. That's their attendance. So I know that they're participating and they're there. So um, basically it's just this little activity supports several areas of the class, social, mm -hmm. academic, and it's just sort of blended itself into the fabric of the class and I found it really useful. Um, and low stress for me and the students. Yeah. So thank you. That's it. Um, I'll pass it off to Fraser now. Uh, thank you, Jonathan. That was exactly 10 minutes and very comprehensive <laughs> and practi practical. Bonus oh, points for it's time. Perfect. You get bonus points for that. Yeah. <laughs> Great. All right. So that, thank you, everybody, for staying so long. We have our last speaker now, and uh, Fraser Gould. 
uh, the amazing Fraser. And if we have time, I'm hoping he'll um, regale us with a magic trick as well. I'm not going to have time. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Andrew. Um, okay, so, uh, uh, well, let me just, I'm going to share my screen. Hopefully uh, everybody can hear me and, and see me okay. If, if uh, just spoken feedback is fine, okay. Um, share my screen. And today, actually, I'm going to be talking about 15 different uses uh, for the, uh, the, the Zoom um, uh, the chat box that, uh, you know, many of us are using in class, okay? Mm. So just one second here. Whoops. Okay, okay. 15 ways yeah. to use Zoom, the Zoom chat box. Can everybody see this? Yes. Yes, excellent. Okay, so I'm going to whip right through these. Um, by the way, my name is Fraser. Uh, <laughs> I'm a new face at Aoyama Gakuin, and probably because of this pandemic, I have the distinction of actually having taught at Aoyama for almost a full year without actually ever stepping foot uh, inside a physical classroom there. So, um, so, this, so we're all using uh, like Zoom or, or, or um, you know, kind of similar programs to, to, uh, to, to teach our students. So um, basically, I think there's three different kinds of uses for Zoom. Uh, you know, we, uh, the, sorry, the chat box within Zoom. Uh, there's the actual like uh, teaching the learning tasks, whether we have uh, target uh, vocabulary, grammar, or whatever, uh, administrative tasks, uh, and then there's the genuine communication that a, a teacher can have with students uh, using the, the chat box. Okay, um, now the chat box can sort of act as a, um, a, a kind of a whiteboard for the class. I, I know that there is a whiteboard function within Zoom, but sometimes the chat box is just easier to use as a whiteboard. And there is sort of one extra benefit uh, using the chat box as a, uh, you know, as a whiteboard that I'll, I'll get to uh, in a little bit, okay? Uh, number one, asking a referential question. A referential question, of course, is a, uh, it's a question where, you know, we're generally interested in the answer. It's not a display question, which is just a question to test knowledge. Um, quite often, I'll start my class, you know, by asking, hey, everyone, how was your weekend? Uh, write one thing you did this weekend in the chat box. And so what this does, like in a face-to-face -face lesson where I'd just be getting like the same two or three students volunteering their answers every year, or sorry, every week, I, I can see everyone's answers and, you know, choose two or three of the more interesting, uh, uh, you know, uh, answers because shy students do interesting things too, right? And we can have a little bit of banter back and forth, okay? So uh, referential questions. Number two is taking attendance. Uh, you'll see I have a little asterisk up there. Uh, I wrote an asterisk beside the... Um, uh, the uses for Zoom that I don't personally use, but I've used, I've heard of other teachers using them in class. Um, so uh, for teachers who especially have large classes, you know, if the administration allows it, just have all the students type their name in the chat box, the, the teacher can just copy and paste it into another program and, and then you have a, a quick attendance. I myself, I, I call out names because I, I like talking to students about the homework they've submitted and stuff. And, and sort of bantering with them, okay? Number three, uh, brainstorming vocabulary. Uh, 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 if I can use uh, I, I, my own example, just last week we were doing a, a class on ED and ING adjectives. Um, and uh, so, you know, I gave them the, you know, the three primary emotions, happy, sad, and angry. And then we just uh, brainstormed some other emotions. And, and, and from that, I could elicit the kind of the ED um, adjectives that we were looking for. Can everyone still see me and hear me okay? Can I just get somebody say okay? Okay. You're doing okay. great. Okay, great, great. Okay. Uh, number four, also generating questions. Quite often, um, uh, I think all teachers use the, the breakout rooms, you know, and, and, you know, with lower level students, sometimes we need to sort of, uh, to, to, to spur them on and give them some, maybe some uh, conversation prompts or, or, or whatnot. So, you know, quite often we'll generate questions uh, as a class. Okay. So, for example, we, I did a class on credit cards uh, last week. So, uh, what are some some conversation questions we can ask about credit cards? Uh, do you have a credit card? Um, uh, uh, how many credit cards do you have? Who pays your credit card? Okay, and, and th these are questions the students can uh, type into the chat box. And if there's any sort of grammatical correction that needs to be done, I can I can add that. And and then uh, and then they go into their breakout rooms. And one of the great things about Zoom is once they're in their breakout rooms, they still have the uh, the uh, access to the the chat from the from the main class. So they have all of those questions. Um, Number five, I love this, actually practicing a grammar structure. Uh, and again, this is something, you know, you can have all the students practice a grammar structure, but in a face-to-face -face class, but it's, it's really, really time consuming to check all of them, you know, and with the chat box, say, okay, let's, uh, you know, for example, the E-D-I-N-G. Um, my, my example, um, uh, last night I was very frightened because I watched the movie, uh, The Ring. It is the most frightening movie I have ever seen. Please make your own example, E-D and I-N-G. And you can quickly check, and the students can see each other's uh, um, example sentences and so on. So that's a uh, you know, and this is all taking place in real time. So 
Um, very useful, I think. Okay. Number six, uh, this is just uh, another administrative uh, thing. I think kind of self-explanatory writing instructions for a task, especially if the students are going into breakout rooms. Um, so, you know, just make sure after you, you, you say what you want the students to do, type it in the chat box too. Okay. Uh, number seven, uh, I use this a lot. Uh, one of my uh, four universities I work at uh, has kind of um, these, uh, these TOEIC uh, vocabulary uh, tests, which are prescribed every week that I have to do at the beginning of class. So I, I just tell the students, okay, uh, you know, keep your cameras on so I can see you're all doing the work. And when you're done, just please type finished in the chat box. And when the number of finished come up, this matches the number of students. I know everyone's done and we can move on with the rest of the class. Uh, number eight, private questions and comments to students. Now, this is what I was saying earlier about um, the, uh, the, the, the chat box works as a whiteboard, but it has the extra benefit is like, imagine if you had a private whiteboard for every student in the class, which is kind of uh -huh. nice. Um, you know, like, uh, hey, Takeshi, where's your homework? You know, I have to remind you this every week. You know, you don't have to embarrass a student by saying that, you know, in, in front of everybody else or, or, and you don't have to waste time by talking to them after class. You can, you can do this, you know, like uh, with the private chat function um, uh, in the Zoom chat box. Uh, number nine, a quick quiz. Um, you know, there's all sorts of great like quiz software out there, like Kahoot comes immediately to mind and so on. But sometimes something will come up in class and I, I want to do like, you know, just kind of involve the class and do a, a quick kind of impromptu quiz. Um, you know, uh, for example, um, we were talking about, uh, you know, actually raising this, the, the birth rate in Japan last week. And, uh, you know, I saw brainstormed ideas. What ideas do we have for raising the birth rate in Japan? And, um, uh, you know, uh, a couple of students wrote, uh, there needs to be better paternity leave. Whoops, sorry. Um, and <laughs> I didn't mean for that to happen. Um, and uh, so they, they were surprised. I said, everyone, please type, what, what country in the world do you think is the best paternity leave? Lots of guesses for Finland, Sweden sort of thing. It ends up, it is Japan, which, you know, um, uh, really? generated more discussion. Yeah, it is Japan. Um, just nobody takes it. That's, that's the thing, right? Um, uh, but uh, by, by law, uh, Japan has the, the best available opportunity uh, uh, leave in, in the developed world. Okay. Number 10, very similar, a quick vote. Hey guys, do you want to do some grammar exercise or a discussion activity now? It depends on how much sort of uh, like freedom you give your students to, to choose the direction of the class. But uh, sometimes uh, you, you don't even have to type grammar exercises or discussion activity. Type one for grammar, type two for discussion. What do you want to do? And they type one or two and, and uh, you know which way the class wants to go. Um, highlighting key vocabulary. I know some teachers use this for like reading exercises with the student. Uh, I use it more for like discussions. If I hear like a, a more advanced student all of a sudden like speak out a word, I think, oh wow, everybody in the class should know that word. Uh, Takeshi, one more time, can you please say that? And then I type it into the chat box. It's kind of like a, almost like a vocabulary notebook for the entire class. Number 12, providing links. Um, I don't do this very often, but every now and then, you know, there is a website that you want uh, uh, the, um, I keep picking on Takeshi here, sorry. I don't have a student named Takeshi, by the way. Um, uh, you, you, you want to uh, provide uh, uh, links uh, for this. Very easy to do with the chat box. Here's the, the, the website that I want you to visit for this, okay? Um, again, providing files. You see another asterisk here. This is not something I do with my students. I usually use Google Classrooms or my own uh, uh, personal website for uh, giving files to students. But I do know some um, teachers who actually like return homework assignments and so on uh, through the Zoom chat box uh, that, because you do have that option uh, with sharing, uh, file sharing. Um, number 14, providing silent feedback. Again, this is not something I do because I feel quite comfortable like when I'm in a breakout room waiting for like a, a lull in the conversation to point something out or even not actually like kind of um, uh, interrupting a conversation and, and, uh, and pointing out a mistake. But uh, I have heard of um, teachers who, you know, give real time feedback uh, in the chat box to discussions uh, as they're happening. Okay. Whether or not the students uh, actually see the feedback is another thing. So you might have to kind of, hey, hey check out the, the, the uh, chat box. And finally, number 15, and actually I only had 14, uh, uh, 14 um, uh, uh, uses. And then uh, just on my last day of classes before I, I came on a little bit of a holiday here in Okinawa, um, I, I, this, this actually popped up. Um, I, I was doing a, a, a test that, again, it wasn't uh, a test that I had made. It was something that the school had prescribed for the students. And after the students had fin finished the test and so on, you know, I really had no idea how they would feel about it. So I said, can you all just send me a, a private message, private so, you know, they're not being influenced by other students and, and just telling what, what you thought of the midterm test. I thought the midterm test was too difficult or easy or too long or too focused on listening. What do you think? And, and so uh, there you have it, everyone. That's uh, 15 uses uh, mm. for, um, I hope I, I, I just squeezed that in right under 10 minutes, didn't I? Okay. You did, you, uh, it's perfect. Okay. 
Fraser. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. But I, unfortunately, I we don't we'll have time for a magic trick. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to. We'll have to reschedule. But yeah, you thank you. Have time to go to the hangout rooms. Maybe oh, you can sorry? Do, do a breakout room and show the people there. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't hear that. Sorry. Um. After this session, you can go to the uh, hangouts section, and you can meet with people from this session and maybe if you you have time you could show the people there a magic trick i think my wife would kill me um okay. <laughs> she, but she's let's defer to the one been very gracious one. for giving this time off this morning <laughs> All right. like to, uh, um but uh um but, but yes but uh uh yes um but but thanks for 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 sharing guys uh, and actually uh, just in case i was going to have i thought i might have inter uh connection uh issues i know i just i wheeled through that really really quick uh, Andrew or Jonathan have a, a, a YouTube video link. I, I recorded this That's beforehand right. just in case yeah. I didn't have Wi-Fi. So um, yeah, so all of those, uh, uh, or I can even type up the, the, the uses. Yeah. Well, our, our information is in the, the digital handbook or whatever it is. So please contact uh, us, any of us, um, if you need want any um, information or want to discuss any of these um, great subjects further. So I just want to thank thank all my co-presenters for um, a wonderful job this morning. I, I learned a lot and I really enjoyed presenting with everybody. So can all thank the, you. I just want to jump yeah. in. Can all of the participants unmute yourselves and give all of our presenters a round of applause? That would be really great. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Great job, everyone. Thank yeah. you for having us.